A conflict can be defined as a situation in which, because of the similarity between two or more actors, a class of interest needs, wills or bodies is created, evolving into different dynamics, either violent or peaceful, depending on the development of different vari variables. The first point to take into consideration is the natural origin of conflicts. The clash of positions is something intrinsic in the human relations and interactions. So the first preamble when framing an analysis should be the statement of the conflict as something impossible to be avoided. Mainstream negative connotation of the term, because of the violent degeneration of some conflicts and its usual interpretation as a zero-sum game, a conflict can be positive as long as it enriches the best peaceful dialogue and debate between the different parties involved. And as a consequence, it improves the farming situation through looking for a formula that accommodates the needs and interests of all the parties. A consensus can be reached through the establishment of common points, mainly connection levels and channels of communication, and without the need to resort to force, neither physically nor psychologically. On the one hand, despite the fact that when referring to the term of conflict, we cannot focus on its occult connotation, we cannot forget the negative consequences that violent struggles are currently having and the importance to tackle them. According to SIDA, during the 2016, probably 130 million persons suffered the negative consequences of violent conflicts around the world and were in need of humanitarian aid. The conflict analysis is used as an analytical tool to break down and examine the main potential factors which affect the evolution of a conflict and to help applying a conflict-sensitive approach. Some international organizations have created their own guides. Some examples are the Conflict Analysis Framework by the World Bank, the Manual for Conflict Analysis by SIDA, or the Conflict Analysis Tools, edited by the Swiss Agency for Development and Cooperation. To frame a comprehensive policy dictating how to behave, three main stages that EOS must consider and which need to be tackled with the same importance are the prevention, the development, and finally the post-conflict situation. Conflict prevention is the avoidance of either the re-emergence or the escalation of farming conflicts or the development of new violent conflicts. It requires identification of which factor events, if tackled with the right efforts and tools, can become key to preventing a violent conflict. When societies fail to establish the required circumstances to prevent conflict and the pursuit of peace fields, conflict emerge. Conflict analysis has to become a framework for the preparation of a context for the peaceful resolution of conflicts, based on dialogue, values, duties, rules and rights for each party involved in the conflict. Furthermore, in the process of exploring the different alternatives and possible solutions to meet the needs of parties involved, it is important to place facilitating communication between these groups at the center of all approaches to peace building. The main elements in the developmental stage of a conflict include the identification of actors, the setting of the agenda, which set the foundations for dialogue. Additionally, it is equally essential to have a safe space in which all parties can negotiate, express their concerns, as well as the presence of an impartial mediator. When a conflict has come to an end and a peace agreement has been established, conflict analysis needs to be used as a tool for growth and improvement, and as an educational instrument for transforming society through confidence building. The, sh the two main areas we should focus on here are on the one hand, transitional and restorative justice, and on the other hand, the reconciliation between the opposing parties involved in the conflict. The culture of peace is defined by the United Nations as an integral approach needs to prevent violence. The culture of peace must be used as an alternative to the culture of violence, based on the education for peace, the promotion of sustainable economic and social development, the gender equality, the respect for democratic values, and the respect for human rights. The goal of the Education for Peace is implementing in society an environment of trust and comprehension, to learn how to have an active hearing of acceptance of each other through respect, through the processes of prevention, negotiation, mediation, and non violent actions, are the main tools to achieve a peaceful society. The Education for Peace must be a synonym of positive change and improvement, having enough tools to create a better world and an educated citizenry, starting from the deepest structural roots of the process of the conflict. The development of a culture of peace should address the root causes of many kinds of aggression by emphasizing rights, law and social justice.
It has support the use of negotiation, mediation, and conciliation as the main voluntary and non-coercive tools to deal with disputes, all of which are based on the respect of human rights, values, and principles. Human rights emerged through the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and is considered a milestone document in human history. Nowadays, there are 28 conflicts raging around the world, from which just one, the refugee crisis in the European Union, is improving, whereas the other 27 are in worsening or unchanging situations. The consequences of these conflicts are extraordinary, with hundreds of civilians killed in Syria alone and around 68 million forcibly displaced people worldwide, together with the millions of refugees. International institutions like the UN, together with those local and regional institutions seeking peaceful solutions to conflicts, are more important today than ever before, and must be supported to be stronger and more effective around the world. Nevertheless, we must also take our responsibilities as global civil society in establishing a lasting and global peace culture, through promoting the respect of fundamental human rights and through transmitting them to future generations.